Check, check, check. Welcome back to the Young OG Perspective, where we give you a new perspective. A young OG perspective. <laughs> You're supposed to say a fresh perspective. perspective. A fresh perspective. All right, we're trying again. A young OG <laughs> perspective, baby. You know what it is. It's the fresh kid with the beard with no fear. And today we came to push positivity. We came to change the culture. But yep. most importantly, we came to change the narrative. Damn, I don't even remember my, our own intro. It's been that long. Golly. You know what I mean? And like, like I said, if I'm the CEO, the CFO is actually um, out of town today. Um, and potting once a week is, like Jeezy said, therapy to my soul. So um, Lando's just on vacation, y'all. He's just on vacation. He's coming back, hopefully. Hopefully. You know, people get out and go on vacations and shit and kind of, like, find themselves. He's been working hard. Um, it's been a rough year, you know what I mean, for all of us. And uh, like like me, I'm outside, right? Like, I, I go to work every day, right? Mm -hmm. um, he's been cooped up in the house working <laughs> with his wife working mm. so they're going to uh they're taking a beautiful vacation to jamaica so um blessings and safe travels to you know the cfo of the young og perspective londo you know what i'm saying um but yeah this gentleman to my right today man he's my fellow light-skinned brethren um you know go ahead you I, you got a dope intro man Shut, bust it yeah you know it's the <laughs> m-i-k-e mama i kill everything mm. Mr. S-T-Y-L-E-S, you now rocking with the best. And if you're going to talk your shit, say it with your chest. Mm. Woke up this morning, I'm feeling blessed. Ooh, I like that shit. Mm. I, I like don't go that. to church, but tonight, these are my confessions. I like that. <laughs> I like that. How you doing, brother, man? Everything I'm good, good I'm man? good. I'm Everything good. good? Yeah, anytime I get the opportunity to come on the show, I'm happy to be here. Yeah. Lando, I hope you're enjoying your vacation. You know, you get to go there, I get to come here. You're still a legend in my book. Yeah. Big legend. Can't wait for you to get back. It's yeah. better when you're here. Yeah. But we here right now, so we're we gonna talk, yeah. we gonna talk our shit. Yeah, we're gonna we talk gotta hold it down for you. Speak your truth and talk your shit. Miguel, you missed it, man. I got on stage and rocked on I rocked the whole stage. You guys did, did you got you got on your, your phone I, still? I do. Oh hell yeah. Yeah. Um but yo, man, let's let's uh let's let's start from um let's take it back to, let to Friday. Shit, let me get comfortable. Yeah, hold let's on. let's take it back to the Utah verse, man. Damn, yeah, man, shit. Um, you were there. I was there, man. How, how you both feeling? There. How you feeling? I, I, unlike you, had a different job. I was filming the whole goddamn night. <laughs> so when you got off, I wanted to go catch up with you, but then um, you got the lens cap on, brother. See, you're rusty too, Miguel. <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted to go chop it up with you, but I was the only one filming on stage, and um, uh, Bobby and Venu had went on, so mm -hmm. definitely had to stay shout on out stage. To them. Yeah, shout yeah, out to love, them. Love that set, man. Dope. Uh, really cool. Moon creative. Gang, Moon Gang yeah. just shooting for the stars. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. So many talented people. My, my only critique for them um, would be to work on their um, cardio and breath control so they can eventually start to do that um, without the lyrics. Oh, like, and that, and that would tracking. be, and that, yeah, and that would be for pretty much everyone yeah. that was going. On stage, yeah, I fell into that bucket. Like my first two, my first two songs were I they? Did, yeah, I did with tracking just because. Well, one, I didn't have show versions for those. Okay, okay. But two, I, I think it did help. Like certain records, for sure. Right. It's like I'm just not rapping every word. Right, but you're but, but you're seasoned though. So like, how as far as like obviously we've seen like crazy, involvement from Bobby and Van Nu and K. Um, Obviously, yeah, that's shout out a, K the dog Utah verse. We're yeah. talking about that. His name has to be mentioned. For and sure. I talked to him about it. He was like, I usually do don't rap over vocals. He's like, but my voice is given out. Mm. So does that kind of play a part in it too? Or yeah, yeah man, absolutely. Because like, I mean, y'all see me shirt off. I was I'm in shape um, or look like it. No, you in shape. <laughs> no homo. But do people you say know, no homo still? Or a pause. Honestly, I don't. I don't think we can say that at all. Oh shoot! Like nothing's homophobic anymore. Like oh. you just accept it. it. No, no. There's um, nothing wrong. Like you're the mate. You're a beautiful human being. Yeah. Like, you're a handsome man. Yeah. I, I you, don't have to pause anymore. You are like, too, brother man. Thank you. I appreciate yeah, it. I got. I got in the gym the next day after that. Real talk. I was like, yeah. this nigga's ripped. I got to get back on my shit, man. Because <laughs> right now I'm about. I'm about 10, 10 pounds over fighting weight, and I'm like, all right, man. Mike then came out the shirt. If we do a live podcast, I got to come out my shirt. Is that why you wore a button up? You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> no, but I, at least, at least, like when we do a photo shoot, I want to be able to just like let this be open. C cigar. That's a good goal. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a good goal yeah. to have. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 
Londo's in Jamaica. He yeah. wants to open his shirt up. Yeah, exactly. You know, I see that. But you know, but but to no, your point, yeah. I mean, to your point though, to your point. Um, yeah, I mean, sometimes like that plays a part. You know, obviously your cardio, mm -hmm. you know, vascular endurance is a big part. Your breath control, you know, um, and you don't have to be necessarily in shape either. Rick Ross, I seen him live when I hosted a concert for him, mm. and he literally was Talk bouncing shit. up and down on the stage, heavyweight Ross. Hitting every word live, no tracking. I'm talking, got so many shades you thought I had a lazy eye. <laughs> oh. You know, hitting every word, you know, to John. And so you don't have to be in shape. You really just have to practice. It's all about practice. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, depending. it's breath control, right? Like it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's all breath control. You know, how often you breathe, like, in your nose, out your mouth, different things like that. Um, and, yeah. How long can you hold your breath? No different than vocalists. Yeah. You know, same thing. Speak Which is probably even almost harder. For Speaking a of vocalist breath control, Frida has probably the best control, in my opinion, out of people out here. She's crazy. Yeah. She's phenomenal. You know? But yeah, man, I couldn't get off stage to go chop it up with you, man. And I know you were you were riding a high. I mean, as your friend, I was fucking just proud. <laughs> I mean, I was proud of everybody because I'm friends with everybody. But for right. you, I'm, I'm a little closer to you. So I was just proud. Like, and then you sent me the video, you slapping your chest. Um, I can hear myself in the background, like, talk your shit. Talk to me nice. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. Like, it was just, it was just such a, it was such a moment for me um, and for Londo. And like, like I said, I was like, yo, I felt like I was performing with you. Like the energy was so crazy because I was right next to you. Then I looked to the crowd and I panned the ca camera to the crowd. They was rocking with you. Um, I was singing every word <laughs> to the songs yeah. that I knew. You know what I'm that saying? That was cool. Like, I ain't gonna yeah. lie, that was cool. Yeah. Like, I was watching footage. Like back. I was bouncing my. Like yeah, I was. I was. It was. It was like a for real like moment, man. So like, how did you you know get a chance to kind of absorb that whole weekend? Um, you know, I'm still kind of absorbing it. Yeah, I'll be honest. Um, you saw it, and they'll see the footage. Like I don't know when that'll come out, but um, man, I don't know. Dude, I don't know. People keep asking me, and it's like I'm just on cloud nine, you know. Um, for me, it was just it was a full circle moment. Uh, they say, what is it? Uh, success is when hard work and preparation, you know, meets an opportunity and they come together. Yeah. Like they say that success, and that's what that moment was. Like you know, and I think that goes without saying. Sticks was amazing on the stage Sticks. as well. He's over here in the building. Sleep. Um, hardest working man. He always sleep. But we rehearsed. You know, we rehearsed, you know, multiple times leading up to the show. I mentally in my head envisioned exactly how I thought this was going to go. Um, and it was kind of testament, a building on of what I did in Juneteenth of last year. I got to do a small performance and debut some of that music. And this was the first, like, ticketed event. Yeah. Performing a new album. You know, I haven't got to do that album live. So there was a lot of new stuff off the album that, I hadn't seen a reaction to so um but anyways soaking up the moment afterwards it was just like man I mean w I guess it's like when you are who you think you are it's just like yeah like that's what was supposed to happen like I wasn't surprised um but you know I'm just grateful yeah you know God is God is truly good like for real like yeah. he put me in this position and, and I, I and I, doing this. I love where they placed you too like um like before right before Bobby and uh Venu and the Moon Gang mm -hmm. Um, I love that placement. Um, also love that you're the only artist that I've seen that stayed and do a sound check. That is true. You know? um, that was a little frustrating, for sure. Um, but yeah, I think that made a difference. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, what else, man? What else? Oh, you, you just, um, I was listening to Dre's podcast the other day. Esther was the only female that performed. That is true. That is true. So definitely in the future, you know, we got we got we got some dope females out here. Oh yeah. So yeah, there's a there there another Utah. I'm still in the Utah verse group on IG, so I got a little insight. To, I guess. Oh okay. Kind of what they're working on. Not yeah. a whole lot, yeah. but they say we, they're gonna do it again. Oh dope dope. So that'd be dope. And you know, I threw some heavy names out here. We're we're here at Lake House now. I threw mm -hmm. a lot of their artist yep. names in the ring. I much respect for each one of those artists. You know, they're top notch performers, entertainers you know, all around, uh, for sure. Definitely well-rounded, you know, men and women in that group that can shut that stage down. But yeah, that was nice, you know. Yeah. I always got something on my sleeve. Yeah, yeah, for sure. She that, came out hella smooth. Too. Yeah, man. She came strutting out the side. And the people like knew who she was, they were like, ah, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, um, 
like I said, the biggest thing, I mean, I kept telling people was just like, it was cool being able to see, like, like you said, all your homies there really getting to, like, we didn't get, like, paid for it, just so people know. Like, a lot of people, they get paid, which is fine. It's not why we do it. But to bring so many people together and feel like they ate off of, like, what I love to do, you know, from my drummer to, to you guys and videography to Esther, my best friend and yeah. artist I work with, for, for her to have the opportunity to step on stage, um, to be rocking Soul by Ame, you know, the house of Ame, I got to put them on my back during one of the biggest moments, you know, um, in, you know, most recent concert history here, as far as locally. Yep, yep. And, you know, that's two things for me, you know, in Utah that I've kind of like trailblazed. Yeah. You know, well, a couple of things. I trailblazed here after dark. Yeah. First to do that. Yep. Um, Juneteenth was a recognized holiday last year, and I got to perform downtown as a black artist. Like, that was cool for me in a city that I'm not from, the state I'm not from. And then, you know, the first local concert, that big, big concert at the Complex, you know, I was a part of that as well. Yeah. You know, not to say I, because there's a lot of people that were a part of it, but, you know, for me, speaking just for myself, you know, that's dope as fuck. Yeah, definitely. And I think, um, and Kay, if you're listening, brother, um, I know a lot of people are saying you should do this different or you should do this next time. Just stay true to what you've already established with you, Connor, and Angela, and just evolve, brother, because I know there's a lot of people probably in his ear right now. Mm -hmm. um, and I know, you know, he was obviously closing the show. And then we had the Moon Gang. And you he know worked. I mean? Yeah. He set it up. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. He set crazy. all that up. He, he did a pod a Podmunity tour. Shout out to the Podmunity. We was all in there, full effect. All the podcasts had their own section. That's another thing, man. I just couldn't, like, ne hopefully next, I mean, I will never turn down being a part of um, visuals or media. But if I'm not asked, I'm going to be chilling with the pod community. Because that was one thing I missed doing was I, I wanted to link up with Lake Talk 801. I talked to them a little bit. Um, Angel from Other Side of the Beehive was there. I talked to Dre for a little bit, but he had to leave early. Um, but, I, you know, I wanted to get a chance to kind of mix and mingle with them. I wanted to bring you up there and kind of, like, introduce you to them because they was like, yo, who was that? And Dre was like, Mike's a star. Mike's a star. You know what I mean? Dre Rockerman. That's yeah. my guy. But like not, now that you mention all that stuff, bro, you you had all the pieces to the puzzle to be the most comfortable artist there. I'm up there. You got Esther. Your girl's right here. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I've worked with Juggy yeah. multiple times. Yeah, like, so I like chop it up with Juggy at every club he DJs at. Yeah, so you you had all the you had all, everything in, in in the right direction as far as like making you feel comfortable. You didn't have a hype man, so it's like that. Those I, I kind of was your hype man. I felt like yeah. it. Shit, I'm not gonna lie. I almost, <laughs> I almost did, but I was like, I don't wanna, I don't wanna overstep. I almost was about to look at the crowd and just like, get up, get up. You know what I mean? But I was like, no, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be cool. I'm gonna be cool. Hopefully, like that footage is, it turns out good. Cause I was, I, my camera's, my new camera's really good at catching what I say, like oh. even without a mic. So really? I know uh, Connor's gonna be like Alonzo was hype. Yeah, we're working on that. We got the recap should be coming. Yeah, soon. So shout out to Hot Happy Thoughts. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Forever in debt, Connor, you know my guy. I mean? Um. A lot of things in the work with him, yeah. you know. I mean, but yeah, man, Utah verse was just dope, yeah. man. And, and bro, that it's was a, that was a moment for me because I like. There's a couple of videographers that I just absolutely adore their work. Um, Jerome Barber, number one, mm -hmm. and number two, Connor. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So for him, Jerome hit me up um, at the beginning of the year and asked me to help him do something, but um, the, the the money kind of fell through or whatever, so I didn't have a chance to assist him, but I was like, oh shit, like he's asking me to help. And then when Connor reached out and was like, yo, I want your help on prayer hands, I want your help over here, I was like, yo, I'm in the right fucking spot. I can't complain. No, absolutely, and, that, and that's what it's kind of like, you, what it's been like. You say, how am I taking this moment in? Um, it's just opportunity after opportunity, and it's like just staying on top of it. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, um, Mateo, yeah, um, shout out to Teo. Photo photographer. How do you, is it, is it Ma Mateo? Yeah, it's just Mateo. Okay, Mateo. Yeah, it's Mateo. Or Teo. Mm -hmm. You know, whichever one, depending on how close you are to him. But um, yeah, that's my guy, man. And like we worked together randomly, and it was like, he's got amazing shots. So I've been posting all those just to keep the momentum going. Um, you know, completely off Utah version, but Blue Cheese, like, just hit a million streams. My first song Shout with a million out, streams. baby. Talk uh, that shit. shit. We'll you know what I mean? Yeah, I seen I, that. I, I was on the pod talking about that record when After Dark, I first talked about Blue Cheese and Out of Tonics, and we're sitting right back here as it hits a million. So, dope to be sitting on this couch, as always. Happy to be here. But, um, yeah, Blue Cheese hit a million. So, that's just more content, man. Um, like you said, working with, you know, Soul by Ame and what they got going. Shout out to Philip Petty. 
you know, and all those. The hey, artists I, that are I over noticed. There. I noticed that's his name. He got to sit. He got to come chop it up. Hey, what is it? Philip? Phil? Phil? Yeah. Phil, you got to come. If you petty, you got to come chop it up with the petty boys. You heard? <laughs> that's facts. We gonna get him up here. Um, a lot of big things going on. Um, you know, with him and his camp and what they got going. And he's very young. You know, he's a 21 year old black entrepreneur, that's clothing dope. designer. You know, I support that uh, 100%. So me, I'm just continuing to take all these opportunities that I got from that and continue to just work, put in the work, and, you know, things will happen. That things take time, just like the album, and, you know, I'm not going to say time is up, but time is now. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So we're going to take advantage of that. And sure. uh, everybody outside this year, so. We outside. Yeah. That's that's the new trend. We talked about that earlier. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know, people be saying teed up, yeah. turned up, yeah. lit, You whatever. You wasn't lying, brother, because I, I was like, what do you, everybody's been outside. Cause my man, I work at a mall, bro. I'm I'm see like seven hundred thousand people a day, so I'm like, yo, everybody been outside. This is true. This is true. Yeah. But people, you know. So my perception was like, I mean, I've been outside. If I want to go to a bar, I go to a bar. If I want to go grab a beer, I go grab a beer. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like last weekend, I seen. It, it, it used to be like one particular club was turned up, and the rest was it was slow for everybody yeah, else. Yeah. Every club people were at was lit. I was like, oh shit. Oh, last night was jumping. For, yeah. It's for Cinco de Drinko, you know, Cinco de Mayo. Shout out to all my Latinos. Yeah, I'm sad. I, I'm sad I couldn't partake in any activities yesterday. I was, yeah, I was, I was, I was hot, man. My boss was in town, but you know that's a different story. <laughs> that's a different story, bro. Yeah, man. I think the reason why the people say we outside is just because, like, you know, it's a mentality. Yeah. Right. They got mask on, regulations. You know, I, I kind of live by my own rules. Like, hopefully nobody takes offense to this. If you do, I'm sorry, but I don't really care. Um, I did what I wanted during COVID. Same, I, same. I wore a mask, same, you know what I'm saying? I, I socially distanced to the best of my abilities, you know what I mean? But I kept it pushing, you know what I mean? I've been outside, like, yeah. I've been in the clubs, I've been on planes, you know, I'm still working and, and you know, rest in peace to anyone who's passed away yeah, from that, definitely not, not to take away from yeah. any of that. Um, but it still was a, a personal choice to move how you move. I'm fully vaccinated now and I'm still moving. So, yeah. so I've been outside. Yeah, and then we could get, we got But that. I get it though for yeah. people who yeah. may not have really, you know, felt comfortable doing that, which is okay. Yeah. Now I think that's why the trend is we outside because some people really are truly just now yeah. getting outside. Getting outside. Yep, definitely. Which is dope. Hopefully we can get back to normal, which is kind of like what Utah verse allowed us to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. And, Shit, I mean, my um, May twenty fifth, my I got my I got my second shot. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take it like a champ. I ain't taking no time off work. <laughs> I'm going. I, I'm gonna stay busy. Like I'm. I'm yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm going in. I, that's what this is all about. Like and, and moving forward from this, like since we just piggybacking off the Utah verse, like we said it was the first opportunity to perform. You know, and, and my goal was to hit hit the ground running as soon as that. The gun went off, bang. Like, I had to be the first one out the blocks. Hold on, let's talk about it, though, man. Because <laughs> I was rolling. And I, and I know it's your, it's, I know it's your um, you know, like, you, you, you got a lot of pre-stage ritual and stuff like that. But <laughs> So I'm trying to talk to my man, right? I'm like, well, no, no, let's take it even back further. Because, like, I was like, let's get this B-roll, boom, boom, boom. And then who was your best friend you introduced me to? Um, the guy, tall guy. He's, like, taller than me. He had a suit oh, on. Oh, uh, KP, credit. K yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, you're like, this is my best friend. I'm like, yo, let's get that B real quick. You're like, no, no, no. We're going to do it later. We're going to do it later. I'm like, all right, cool. So then I'm hanging out backstage and um, Angela's talking to me. And you're like, hey, sorry to cut you off, but me and my man got to lock in. <laughs> I did. I did do that, didn't I? I forgot, bro. I forgot I did do that. <laughs> well, the thing was, I was tweaking, bro, because. No, but then, here, then check this out. So I'm like, all right, check this out. Check this out. This one thing we got to do better next time, right? Because you're giving me water. Put this on stage. I'm putting the water on stage for mm -hmm. you, whatever. I have no problem doing that. Sticks, it, he, he's like, yo, where are my sticks? I'm like, they're in the green room. He's like, he go get them? I'm like, yo, I'm, all right, now I'm wearing three hats. I'm putting this nigga's water up stage. I'm going to get his, his drumsticks. And I got to be back in time, make sure my camera settings is right. You know what I mean? You're like, you're, you're talking about running in real fast. And then when you ran in, bro, you ran, this dude was running like he was running the four or five in a suit. <laughs> You know I did I mean? hear some high knees. Yeah, so I forgot somebody's footage from Instagram. It shows the cat, and I just was like this <laughs> after. I, I hope the footage looks good, but yeah. So then, so then, um, you know, Mike got some extra warm up time. So Sticks goes up there and just starts rocking to uh, uh, is it trophies? Trophies by Drake. Man, 
Can we talk about how perfect that song is for you to come in? Um, and it's going to segue into my next question. Yeah, absolutely. So the thing was, well, thank you for putting the water on stage. Usually it's like you have someone up there with you. like you. No, I got you. I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. So I asked um, DJ Rockalypse who, who rocked that set, man. Yeah. Like, that was crazy. With the scratching? Nah, he was doing what? See, the thing is, like, and not to get too off, like, what people don't realize, if they hadn't heard my songs before, they don't really know what he was doing. Mm -hmm. like he was hollowing out the beat, you know, he was doing scratches, he was going off of Sticks when Sticks was doing different stuff and riding my flow, and, and it was like, we became like a jam session, and that's why it was so like, I was telling people, I blacked out. I really did black out up there, because it was so fun, yeah. and I was like, I forgot there was people in there, like, I was just immersed in like, just the music, like hearing my own music, hearing the drums, hearing E-Rock just go, and it was like, damn, this is fun. Yeah. You know, and it wasn't because there was, people were there, it was cool, but I was like, yo, this is, I would do this at home. So, um, but getting ready for that, I told E Rock Lips, I was like, I can't go on yet. I need at least two records. Like, I need two hype records. Um, I can't just walk on stage after somebody else. And I was like, I need something Drake, anything Drake. He was like, well, what do you want? I was like, well, you play like what's next already? Like, play that. So he plays that. And then when he played Trophies, I was like, oh, he gave me back to back. Yeah. Like, I was like, oh, oh, shit. You know, and then it was like, that was when you came, <laughs> that was when you came up to yeah. me, he, he, so he tries to talk to me on the side of the stage before we go on, as Trophy's playing, <laughs> Sticks is just rocking out. Killing it. The crowd is going Killing nuts. It. As soon as they heard the kick drum, they did exactly what we thought they was going to do. They all looked, they all ran to the day, got close, and was like, yo, we rocking. And Zoe's trying to talk to me, and I didn't say a word. I just looked at him, and I was just like. He said. And I put my hand up and was like, <laughs> "All I was trying to tell him was, hey, this is perfect." I said, "This is perfect," and he looks over. Shh. <laughs> I was like, "All right, man." The, but the know. reason, but the reason why those because and and this is no shade to anyone, but this is just show business. Yeah. Sound check ran two hours late, two and a half hours late. Mm. You know, so that took me out of that two hours of my night that I planned to be like, I'll be home, yeah. shower. You want to come here shit, for LA shave, Kells? Come check yeah. out, you know, Kells listening party, get the juices going. Yeah. Vi vibe a little out. Drink. Yeah, vibe out with everybody, yeah. take some pictures, you yeah. know, feel like the man, you know, make a little tour. So, yeah, man, we was at um, the late, the uh, Slap Lake City, Ladies of the Lake, um, Lake House, Ladies of Lake House did a set. We're talking about Spit That Fire, Killed Her Set. Courtney Kelly performed, um, Frida, L.A. Kell. Um, who else performed? Ernie. Ernie performed. Said I live my, oh, wait, I, I rewind my life a good. thousand times. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then the Ballhead Bandit opened the show. It was crazy, yeah, that's crazy, right. crazy. I got the footage. Yeah, you got the footage. I'm going to need you to send that so I can go ahead and. Uh, Snapchat. Yeah. <laughs> You put that on Snap? I didn't post it. Oh, okay. They just take, Snapchat take the longest videos, and you get to filter, you know. Mm, mm, mm. So I'll take a Snapchat video. Yeah, man, bro, I've been, I've been working on, I've been. It was hard, though. Thank you, man. I appreciate it, man. I've been working on some bars. I'm going to give y'all some right quick, real quick, okay? Okay. I was thinking about them today, because, um, you know, we got the ultimate light skin capsule dropping, so I, I was thinking, yeah. I, I got this instrumental, I really want to play over it. Say what's real. All right. <laughs> I, 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 hey. You ready for that? Are, are they ready for it? It's two people bodied that beat. Who? Oh, yeah, yeah. The original. Yeah. So. And, and Drizzy Graham. Yeah. So I, I came up with some bars, like, just like in my light skin, emotional bag when I was working out. Inspired, I was inspired by Mike, so I started working out. I mean, I've been working out, but, like, the thing is, I'm older, so, like, if I slip up on my diet, it's, like, pointless. Where you can, I've seen this nigga eat so many burgers and, like, have a six-pack still. Like, it's not even fair. <laughs> Alien DNA. Yeah, exactly. So, um, but you know, did you know I used to, I used to be 270? I'm lying. I, I'll show you a picture. It looked like I had a fat suit on. Yeah, like I used to be 270. Congrats, man. Yeah, man. How so, long ago? Mm. Man, I was like in 2011 when my daughter was first born. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. So, um, so yeah, man, I've been busting my ass. Health so I, as well. Yeah, so now I know, now I well. know like the things, basically like for me and my genetics, I'm black and Mexican. So for me, it's uh, uh, meat. Fish, mm -hmm. fruits, and vegetables. Yeah, I try to keep it like that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, if I get too, if I drink too much, you know, so gotta hit a couple double cheeses. You know. <laughs> yeah, you got to. Hey, you gotta get the greasy burger the next day. Like, yeah, it's, it's inevitable. Yeah, but you know, talk about health. I, yeah. I just tell people all the time. It's like 
I go to the gym so I can enjoy this. Right. Do you do cardio or you just do weights? No, I do cardio. I okay. Do cardio. Um, I got a bad knee, so I do light cardio. Like, I'll do... Um, Stairmaster or something like that? Nah, intermittent, oh. uh, like jogging. Like oh, okay. Treadmill, okay. You know? Um, and not hoop, but cardio. Gotcha. You know, hooping is good cardio. Sex. Sex is yeah. great cardio. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, My daughter B is 10, man, so I know she can know what's going on, so we got to be very careful with that. <laughs> Like, door got to be closed. She got to be, like, knocked out, TV on still. Like, Nightwell. yeah, man. Because, like, <laughs> like I just remember hearing my parents, like, man, come on again. Like, dog, I you know? heard my pops one time. And. Yeah, man. <sighs> I stayed upstairs. Miguel, Miguel's like, man, in Mexico. I stayed upstairs and I could hear it. That's what I'm saying. No, in Mexico, cause like, because y'all, y'all cause, well, that's house. what I'm saying. No, like, <laughs> like, like, the oldest person will be 28, but have a brother that's two. <laughs> You know it's true. And, the parents, <laughs> and, the, and I feel, I, I feel like in the Latina community, like they cool with bumping uglies. Oh yeah. Like, oh yeah. Mom and dad's like, go ahead. They're like high high risk pregnancy. My ass. I'm 36. I'm about to have this baby. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, man. Thursday we was at what? Yeah. Soundwell. Soundwell. Um, ladies of the lake, right? And Lake House killed it. Yeah. Bro, they had the feel goods up there. I don't even know if I want to like divulge their set if nobody saw it, but I'm working on the recap they, they video. They came through like a four person intro to like spit, and it was like the most hardest shit. I've yeah. Ever seen. Well, I sit I sat here the day before and watched them learn the songs, and man, I can't believe how fast they pick up on the songs. Yeah, man. Like musicians are, are yeah are very and shout out to Josh. He's the um is it Josh Sticks who's the director of the Feel Goods. Yeah, shout out to Josh Francis, man, the director of the Feel Goods. Like, Kerry made that, or CJ made that very clear. I'm just a band member in this band. He's the musical director. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, I would love to work with them. Yeah. You know, that's the next step, to be honest. And that's what I put on K the Dog's uh, thing when he was asking who should perform. I said, definitely have Mike backed by the Feel Goods. Really? Baby. For next time? Yes. Okay. I put that on there. Out. Yeah. I'm, I'm with it. I'm ready. Yeah. I'm ready. I got reached out to about doing a show. Uh, um... Another local show. Oh, People for are putting some things together and they asked me, you know, to be on it. Well, so, that, I, you, so let's talk so about that. We're the, working some things that's out. The, we'll that's, that's what's beautiful right now. Not, not, not only the, the unity in the community that happened that night, right? Because, um, you know, it was, it was all about Salt Lake City. It was all about Rose Park. You know what I mean? Um, shout out to Young Majin. He's from the Ogden area. That's where Londo's from. So when we interview him, that's going to be a great episode because some of Londo's people were there to see Young Majin. So we got to mm -hmm. have Young Majin on. Um, but let's talk about it. The trickle effect of th this idea, right? So well, let's, let's back it up. Let's talk about, so we started After Dark, right? With you. Right. Shout out to you. Then we had Kay the Dog and Bobby B. Mack. That's where I met Angela. I forgot I had even met her there that night, right? Because yeah. we had, we, we did like a limited show, like 50 people, just whatever the rules was. Well, I, I couldn't be there. Yeah. I get what I was doing. I, yeah. I, 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 like, Double yeah, so we 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 know we're following COVID guidelines, masks. Frida was at the front of the door, damn near doing everything but checking temperatures. She was spraying everybody with hand sanitizer. Um, Miguel wasn't there that night. You had to go film your niece or something like that. Um, but Angela was there and didn't understand the local scene until she came to um, K the Dog and Bobby B's After Dark. So that motivated the Utah verse, which is awesome. So now the Utah verse is gonna shed light on other things that are going to come up what dj juggy's been doing is going to shed light on other things which that are coming huge, up which yeah still is so then we can get back to so we had moist bentley on here um in the early 2000s like i, I shouldn't say but mid 2000s like 06 07 08 a lot of the local artists um were because you know sundance is so big out here right a lot of the local artists pell is one of them pell open for nelly you know what i mean moist bentley open for akon that's what we need to get back to. Yeah. And, you know, that was honestly, I looked at it as, I don't know how the other artists looked at it, but I looked at Utah versus somewhat of an audition mm -hmm. for anyone who is out there watching that has the power to put a show together. If you're listening to this, if you're watching this, I'm ready to go. You saw the footage. I'm your guy. Uh, there, was a lot of, there was a lot of artists. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of artists, you know, on the, the bill that, very talented yeah. as well, not to take anything away from them. But my personal experience was just like, I'm showing up, I'm showing out, and if someone influential was in the crowd that has the power to put more shows together, like, I'll be damned if I, you know, they don't walk out of this building saying, yeah. like, we got to talk to him. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And, my, know, that's, that's what's happening. Yeah. That's what's starting so, to happen now. Okay, so. you going to do it? 
Um, yeah, I mean, I talk, they asked how much I wanted to get paid, so we're talking and about you get, And you getting compensated? Yeah, we're talking financial, okay. so, we, you know, we got to discuss a few things, mm -hmm. um, you know, because, and this is one thing I do want to shed light on, when people ask, like, how much an artist gets paid, like, it's, when they're asking about those totals, they have to account at least what I learned. Beforehand, it's hard to make money when you have so many hands involved to help you. When you got a DJ that's got to go on the road or something. When you got a drummer, you know, road what type manager. of show are you asking? Yeah. If you want the real Mike style experience, it's like, I have to pay a drummer. You know, I'm going to have to pay a DJ. You know, I'm going to have to pay someone else. And then I got to coop my fees to be able to put back into my brand. So sometimes it's like, when you're, when you're saying those numbers, it, some people get like almost offended or scared. And it's just like, you know, hey, these are, you know, I'm asking this because I have people I have to pay that have to eat. Mm -hmm. If it was just me, it's like, yeah, we, it might be different. Yeah. You know, but we have to say, you know, we have to figure out what it is. And then you have to take into account how many people would be in attendance. You know, what other artists are on the bill? You know, how are they going to promote the show? You know, are they going to bring people out? Or is it going to be like, you know, the Mike, Mike Styles has to pack out the show. You need know, to take all those things into account on a local show. Yeah. You know, because a, a national headlining show or a festival, you got big names who are going to bring majority of these people out. Yeah. You know, so you can be like, yo, I'll just take the exposure. You know, but on a local show, at least in my opinion, and I hope people don't take this the wrong way. Like, I mean, I had bars. Like, you know, I, I said, I don't do local shows. They can't afford me. Mm -hmm. You know, call my agent. I'm too busy touring. Mm. Like, that's facts. Like, I've been on road. You know what I mean? I two for three Back years on road. in a row. You know, been paid really well for those shows, and and I'm here to support the local community, and you know, not to make it seem like it's about money because it's not. But this is just an education lesson. Yeah. On when you're well, asking people to perform. And I think and I think it's great you're shedding light on this, not to cut you off, because out of everyone that was performing that night, you're the more you're the most seasoned. I would agree. It is what it no, it is what it is, bro. Like, not that you're old, but you're a lot older. You've had a lot more experience. You, you, you've dealt with execs. Shout out to our video. We did more vino. Went all the way up to Rock Nation. Hey. hey. Shout out Rock Nation. <laughs> Call me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, that, that's... Yeah, I mean, thank you for that. Yeah, for real, because um, that's why the opportunity was so big, man. I've been out performing so many big crowds and open for so many artists and... Uh, to get back on stage truly was a blessing. Yeah, it yeah. was a very, very humbling moment. Like, that's why I was so emotional backstage. He was like, "Damn!" I was like, "I, I loved it, bro." What it was like, bro. And it was like, so. I fucking forgot. Yeah, and since hey, we 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 we're coining it here. It don't matter sexuality. We ain't gonna say no homo pause. And I know it's a game when people say that shit, right? Um, but it was a cute moment i could say that because i have a 10 year old so some shit is cute and she's a girl i'm gonna say it right now she's cute <laughs> i'm cute you know what i mean um but it was cute when you're like where's my girlfriend uh, you know i might insert that up in here <laughs> can i insert that yeah <laughs> yeah nah that was cool man and um like i said i can't wait to share that footage yeah. one day that was really dope um and you know that was cool for me i haven't had that experience i haven't been like in a full-fledged relationship mm. um in my career where I have a monumental musical moment and the first thing I think of is where's my loved ones. Yeah. You know, you see it all the time, you know, when the Super Bowl, you, you know, you see people yeah. run and grab their families yep. and, uh, you know, Kobe hugging his wife, you know, rest in peace. Yep. Rest Tom in peace. Tom Brady going to get, you know, his fam and stuff like that. You see that immediately. And for me, that was dope because, you know, when you're out on the road, like you have your homies and stuff, but I've never had like, like my pop usually, you know, isn't there like, cause you can't make it. Cause yeah. Out of state, he's working. Did did you did so you cool. tell him about the show? Yeah, 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 yeah. We got to talk about it. Um, he was he was actually gonna surprise me. Mm. He was gonna come out here, but uh, there was some family issues that popped up last minute. Uh, so damn, that mm. sucked. Like my dad, love my dad. That's my road dog, bro. Um, but he's gonna get there. We're gonna have way more. That, that's what I'm excited about. Yeah. Uh, way more opportunities. And if you're watching this and y'all y'all support this show and you support me, I guess as an artist or human, like. We need traction, bro. Yeah. We mentioned yep. Rock Nation. Like, we got people on the phone. Um, we got really big things happening behind the scenes. Like, I hope this doesn't get me in trouble. I'm not famous enough, I don't think. But um, we need traction. We need shares, you know. Um, if you support, if you appreciate your local artists and the work we put in, like, ride for us. Because, you know, we ride for y'all. We really want to put on for Utah, the city, um, and represent that and be in, 
you know, a non-native of this state, I take that so seriously and I'm ready to put on for y'all. That, that's so. why I said, man, like, as far as me, not not because you my homie, but I felt like you had one of the better sets because you're not from here. You're not from here. And I'm from here, so I know how this goes, right? So mm -hmm. shout out to all my Polynesians, shout out to all my Polynesians, my Usos out there. But they, and we talked about this on After Dark with Venu, they show up, man. They're not like us. Like, they don't hate on us. Like, they, you know what I mean? And, and Venu kind of shed, shed some light on that. Like, well, you know, they'll be their big, your biggest fan or your biggest hater. But in our community, we don't even have the biggest fans. You know what I mean? So it's like, so when they started screaming for you, I was like, oh, it's you done, you done won the Polynesians over and you won the whole crowd over. So I was like, yo, like, yeah, man, I feel like you had the hardest mountain to climb that night, not being from here. And then in return, had everybody just fucking rocking with you, bro. And I'm not saying that just because you my boy and we talk every other day. Like, yeah, yeah. you tore that shit the fuck down. Thank you. Yeah, I felt The it. fuck down. I mean, and, and, and let's, hold on, let's not even shit young majin's first words was salt lake city what the fuck is up like he had a lot of energy that's hard heva heva was cold heva was man heva was nice he was i like smooth. yeah i like how he was like yo i'm not <laughs> i thought i told you characters i'm not a rapper <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah 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 i gotta get some music with yeah him, man. That's and, and he's also been light-skinned i told him that backstage when we did the interview <laughs> <laughs> hey we take all we can get we recruiting everybody. Everybody got light skin quality. Sticks is ultimate light skin. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone has light skin quality though. That is fact. Yeah. That is really fact. Though. Yeah. You can't help it. Yeah. You know, all them selfies you saying, that's a light skin face. Hey, the prettiest pit bulls. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna leave it right. I'm just gonna leave it right there. <laughs> light skin capsule coming soon though. It is. It is. It's gonna be epic. It's gonna be epic. Um, but yeah, that man, it was it was great. So. To my last, so I told you we were gonna segue into something. So how 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 influential was Drake for you? Being an ultimate light skin, um, kind of looking like him a little bit, a little shorter. Yeah. But um, you got the abs. You didn't pay for those abs. You worked out for those abs. Yeah. Um, I would say as far as like girl quality, you probably had the same tens and twelves as as him. Not the same, but like like you know your caliber is a little bit up there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I yeah. Come on, man. I. I got friends that are from the hood, man. I see them rolling around fives and sixes with scars and stitches, man. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. my girls are dimes. So yeah, 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 man. Shout out to Ali, you yeah. know. Um, There's some people that pulled up on a video shoot. I'm not going to name no names. They rolled up with fives and sixes. Just saying. You know what I mean? Um, like, how, how influential was Drake for you? Because we we're I forgot what artists we were talking about. You're like, I just never really got into him. Um, not, what, what, Were we talking about Tupac? Was it Pac or was it? I mean, Pac is or was it Jay? I, I listened to. No, we was talking about uh, Static G. Yeah. Oh, Shock G. Shock, Shock G. G. Shock G. Recipe G. Shock G. Yeah. G messing yeah. Things up. Yeah. Shock G. Yeah. Um, and that's a whole nother story. And that's it was just more or less like Drake for me personally. One, he looks like me. Mm -hmm. Right. He's light skinned. Talk that shit. Cool. Yeah. And he was kind of like a crooner. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like he was talking about like love, and he, he was rapping though, and he was like really emo about it. Yeah. So for me, I was like, all right. You can be light skinned. He's from Canada. I mean, his dad's black. You know what I mean? He knows about the hood. He's not really from the hood. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He's Jewish. But like you said, wasn't born in the hood, had the same problems. Facts. You know what I'm saying? And then it was like he was talking about love and heartbreak. And that was what all I knew growing up. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I didn't Were you a hopeless romantic? Yeah, probably. I was. I, think I, was. I was. Straight up. Straight I think up. I was. Yeah. yeah. Um Shout out to my eighth grade girlfriend. She just started following me on the IG. There you go. There you go. Watch out, man. Shit. No. Uh, <laughs> no, but um, yeah, he was crazy, crazy influential, man, because I got to see somebody representation. We talk about that in black culture a lot mm -hmm. right now, being represented properly. And he was a good representation of that. Um, and he was barred up. Yeah. Was barred up. Like people and still to this day, people try to say Drake don't like, rap, you and I'm just like, you're crazy. You, like, like a bitch who's married that ain't missed. Sorry, 24 hours from greatness. I'm that close. I can still deliver like a midwife. Yeah. You know, I'm not saying I'm the nicest. I just live life like it. Anyway. Yeah. You know, I, I, he was just, man, he was huge for me. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, that was one of the main reasons I really started taking my craft seriously is when he happened. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it was a combination of him because I was like, yo, he, I can relate. And then the other rappers were my 
favorite was like Lil Wayne, mm-hmm. was who was in the same camp. Yeah, it was the same like you know, era. Um, yeah, and that's what I say in the arrival. You know, my favorite rapper, Lil Wayne, Alien DNA. Mm. You know, okay, 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 okay. You know, I just love that whole. Yeah. You know, Wayne was so out of this world with yep. all his bars, and like he was like the Kobe of rap to me. Yeah. You know, he just was relentless. Yeah. And every bar was going to be just. He never wasted a line. Yeah. So I took that in plus Drake's, you know, ability to talk about love and romance and, and you know what I mean, be like kind of the nerdy kid who nobody fuck with, which kind of was like me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I was an athlete, but I wasn't the coolest kid. I was a nice guy, but the bitches didn't fuck with me. You know, finished last. Got the <laughs> fucked up hairline with the Coke bottle glasses. Like, this glow up is real. I'm sexy as fuck. Now, nah, what's up? All my girls in high school, you wish them. You're like, Ooh, boy, tell me. Talk my shit. God damn. Talk anyway, that shit. <laughs> Jack Daniels going up. But I'm Look at just Miguel. Miguel saying, dumb, do man. you understand now? Oh. <laughs> now, nah, Drake was cool, man. Like, he was one of my favorite rappers ever. Kanye. Yeah. You know, just all of them. Hove. Mm-hmm. You know, the double, triple entendre king. Yeah, quadruple entendre. Um, that's another that. B. Let's talk about but that. But that's another B. Because I just listened to and that. And that's song. another B. Sorry, <laughs> not, sorry, not sorry. Let's talk about it. Nas yeah. or Jay-Z, who had the better verse? Man, I, because I, cause he said I'm the cryptocurrency Scarface. Yeah, I'm Coinbase. I'm the cryptocurrency. Scar- I'm the cryptocurrency Bro, Scarface. I'm, I'm going to call it a solid draw because the that's another B. And shout out to fucking Hype Williams for not overcomplicating the video. Because as a videographer, I'm like, oh, he's he is just doing a crossfade like a motherfucker. But his shots were just, yeah, they were just clean. clean. And you know what it reminded me of is the early 2000s videos. I feel like whenever Hype Williams jump on, he has not evolved. Like, I shouldn't say he hasn't evolved, but he has not changed his style. Like, he's going to give you a Hype Williams video. Yeah. Like, it wasn't and, anything and there's extra. there's no one else to shoot that. Because, I mean, like, for those two, I have the artist that's yeah. kind of perfect guy to shoot that. Yeah, like, like his shots were so clean, but the simple crossfades, I was like, man, shout out to him for not changing. Because the, it, 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 it still told the story. Mm-hmm. You didn't have to do all these crazy transitions nope. and crazy moving the camera. And, like, I mean, shit. I mean, dude, like, Belly, that when they went in to rob the strip club, that's yeah. the hardest fucking, that's, like, Man, that's up there with New Jack City to me. For sure. Yeah. And, and the crazy thing is, like, if we're speaking on music, that's what real rap will do for you. Yeah. You don't got to do no crazy fucking video when the entertainment is the words they're saying. Yeah, exactly. You don't got to do nothing. Yeah. What do we do? The more Vino, like, yeah, we have some cool aesthetics and backdrops, yeah. but in reality. But, bro, I just cut. Standing in front of a camera hey, rapping. I cut. Right? I, was, I wasn't trying to overcomplicate the process. I was like, I just did clean cuts. It, everything was clean. Everything mm-hmm. was in focus. And it told the story. Yeah. So... I shouldn't but say I, I like we, the young OG perspective. True. Mike presents Morvino. But that's a I different would say skit I, coming. I, I instantly, without really giving Jay a chance, said Nas. The first time I heard it, I was mm-hmm. like, Nas, hands down. I was like, I, I can see. Jay, because, and, I like, and I like Jay. I'm, I'm a bigger fan of Jay Z than I listen to more of his catalog. But do you more think? Often. But do you think you're giving that to Nas because of the project and the body of work he just put out? No, because I haven't listened to that. You haven't. You haven't. You haven't listened to uh, Kings, whatever, whatever. I'm gonna chance to. Dude, I make music, so true, what true, is very true. I'm always in very music, true. So sometimes it's like I just get caught up mm-hmm. and I don't get a chance to scour the internet. Like I need that's why that's why Jay Z or Drake and them keep them young bucks around. Yeah, they always keep them up to date on mm-hmm. like what's hot. Yeah, and that's why um, I fuck with DJ Tao so much out here. Yeah, shout out, he, Tao, shout out to DJ Tao, man, because yeah. he that like he's the one put me on a throw, baby. <laughs> that's my song. In like February, I was like, who? So he's a little bit. So I was like, because I was filming when he was with D. I was like, who's this? He was like, it's throw baby. And the whole crowd was like, throw baby. I was like, because you know, I say baby. It was like, yeah. It was that's a marriage. Just, that's just the joint, right? Yeah. And honestly, the lyrics are funny, right? Yeah. But we all know there's a lot of truth to that. Oh, yeah. For sure. You got to have a throw baby. But um, yeah, man. No, nah, I haven't got a chance to listen to it. I'll listen to it. But then I listened back today. And Jay was really gone. He rapped a little bit slower. He did his, his M's talk like he did. But when I really listened, like the last line he said, intermittent, fa- intermittent fasting, but I'm not missing a meal. But I'm not missing any of these meals. Yeah. That's a bar. That's a bar. Jay goes in, bro. Yeah, man. Jay. So, so that was, I, I like that song. Um, Cali Cali, cool album. Been listening to that. Yeah. You know, the last couple of days. You know, because he always put that all I've been, I've been, I'm, I've been listening to the, um, not the um, Victory Lap Nipsey, but I've been listening to um, whatever the, uh, the, one, the one he sold for $100 a CD. And has like uh that. yeah the one that has like status symbol on it. I I'm getting back back rubs in these leather seats. I can't even think. 
Yeah, but I've been, I've been, because I was doing some yard work today. Um, I was listening to old school Nip. Um, because you, what, what year were you born? 90, 90. 90. Okay, cool. So you was around for Jordan? Yeah. Okay. Iverson. Oh, yeah. I mean, everyone has those. Don't even know what's going on. They just yeah, buy They it. actually don't. Yeah. <laughs> um, shout out to Alan Evans. What's up? That's the best leather you can buy. You know what I mean? For sure. Um, so I ask you that because how, like how influential Drake was to you musically and personally, it sounds like as well. Right. Yeah. But Kanye was that for me. Okay. Cause number one, I've always dressed like this. Right. So I, I don't know, man, I put on, I put on a, uh, I try to do a tall tee and a headband and a, and a do rag and shit like that. Couldn't do it. <laughs> it just, I, nah, man, it just wasn't my thing, man. So. I just always dressed like this. And then when Kanye came out wearing blazers, I, I had like four blazers already. I was already doing blazers and jeans. Yeah. You know what I mean? And the weird like Steve Madden shoes. Like that was me. And Lacoste. Like that was Polo, Lacoste. Like I was already doing yeah. that. Yeah. So when Kanye got things cracking, all of my friends was like, Zo, where do you get your clothes? So Kanye was. Eyes out. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. No, yeah. Yeah. You know, give me some on that. Yeah, give me hey. give me some on that. <laughs> give Ar me some on that. Argyle sweater. Yeah. Like I was already dressing like that. So it was just funny to cause 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 Kanye was that to me because I dropped out of college. I was like, this shit is not for me. You know what I mean? And the shit he was saying was just just really resonated with me. And I too myself, like I said, shout out to my eighth grade girlfriend, just started following me on the IG. Uh <laughs> what's her name? You can't say her name. Man, her name Monica Escarino. Hey. hey. <laughs> Escarino. Well, no, it was funny because they was like, um, so uh, Escarino. I don't know if that's her last name now. Um, but uh, it was funny because I was at like a, so when I met my wife, right, she knew a lot of the people I went to high school with. Ah, okay. Yeah, so, but but she's younger. She's younger than me by a couple years. So um, I think my wife is like 35, something like that. Um, sorry, Melissa, not to age you out there. You look great. You look great. Got a 10 year old. Look amazing. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So um, when I started dating my wife, um, I'm like, she's like, yeah, my my sister married such and such. I'm like, oh, that's that's the home. That's he's not, he, he's the homie now. But that wasn't the homie then. But I was like, oh, that's such and such sister. I went to I went to great like not grade school, but middle school and high school with her. So, you know, X, Y and Z, X, Y and Z, X, Y and Z. And she's like, yeah, I'm like, do you know? X, Y, and Z, which is Monica Escarino. <laughs> and she was like, yeah. I said, oh, that was my eighth grade girlfriend. You know, it didn't, it didn't end so well. You know what I mean? And so we were at a little get together the night. And I said, hey, y'all still speak to Monica Escarino. I'm using government names. I'm not, I'm not editing none of this shit out because this is the truth. Can nobody speak your truth if you're talking your own truth? So Talk your shit. Yeah, exactly. So this girl, which is my brother-in-law now, sister was like, you won't follow her. I said, what the fuck do I got to lose? Like, I'm, I'm fucking 38 with, with a kid, with a whole kid. Like, what do I got to lose? Like, what's she going to do? Deny it? Okay, that's cool. I ain't going to cry about it. She accepted it. She accepted it, right? So she's like, you ain't going to follow. Say I won't. I had a couple drinks. Boom, follow. <laughs> Everyone in the room's just dying. I'm like, this, this is like 30 years ago, pretty much. And then my <laughs> wife was like, hey, uh, got to Got a friend request for Monica Escarino. <laughs> it's all good. She's living her best life. I'm living my best life. I'm living my best life. Oh, my God. You know what I mean? This is what happens when you only have one meal, work out, do hella yard work in 90-degree weather, and drink Dag Dag Jack Daniels. You know, this is the platform for That's it. That's what happens. You know what I mean? It's hot outside today. It is. It is, man. It's going to be cold outside. It is. Outside. But, but, but is it? Yes. 67? Yes. That's... No, colder. No, it's not. I thought. 50. It, are you sure? Yeah. Weather, weatherman. What's the weather on Saturday? Fifty. That's fine. It was like eighty today. True. That's Utah 30, for you. A thirty degree difference. They're that's, playing with us right now. That's, that's, I'm trying to get in the pool, bro. Just get in the heated pool. <laughs> Fourth West, what's up? Who lives in Fourth West? Holler. So wait, so um, talk about um, uh, Soul. Is it called Soul? Yeah, Soul by Ame. Yeah. So how did that kind of partnership ambass and are you like an ambassador? Like how did that come up? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's the right terminology to use. Um, but the way it came together was through Esther, mm. right? Which um, Esther Reina, 
best friend, man. Mm-hmm. She literally, like, without her, dude, I met so many people through her. She's just in the scene. Like, everybody knows her. She's from here. Um, love her to death because she's created so many opportunities for me. <clears throat> and that's why, that's why I keep her by my side, for, yeah. for real, just because it's like I have to show that love back. Mm-hmm. Um, take care of your people is what I'm trying to say. Yep. But long story short, uh, she was rocking with him. She modeled a couple things for him. And, you know, he had brought her on for the House of Ame, which is kind of a cre- creative family, mm-hmm. right? It's not a collective. It's not a label. You know, it's just a creative family of people who had the same vision, you know, uh, and who love fashion. Yeah. You know, we love fashion. We're standing behind, you know, Mr. Petty and his brand, and we're also helping him bring that to life. He got to come up. With that name, uh, he got to come over here. Yeah, he, we're going to get him on the show yeah. for sure. And then, you know, he made a post about... Um, people wanted to model or be like artist or something mm-hmm. and you know i was like model esther had sent it to me say yo hit him up yeah so i hit him up you know and just did what i do network at his finest i say hey, yo what's up i'm esther's homie you know what i'm saying like i see you need this this, and this. Yeah. he told me holler at you da 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 um you know I, I rock with the clothing line i seen it i'm just trying to see what i can do to help out mm-hmm. so anyone who's out there like when they talk about shoot your shot like, your network is your network. Don't be scared to shoot your shot because opportunities come. Yeah. Closed mouths don't get fed. Yep. You've heard it a billion times, whatever. Uh, anyway, so we do that. I'm in Miami at the time. I, I love being on vacation and doing business. I'm I like, know. You hit me up. I was like, did you butt dial me? Like, nah, bro. Like, I'm weird <laughs> like that. Like, I like, man, if I'm getting a, like, pedicure or some shit, like, I love being on the phone. Yeah. Like, sometimes I, like, you know, like to relax. Do you paint your toenails? Um, I do. Clear coat. Mm-hmm. I, I changed I changed this shit up. I got red on right now. I'm about to. What should I do next? What should I do next, y'all? I do. I really do. Cause I run though. I run, so my shit is blue. My shit is black and blue anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like my big toe be getting fucked up when I hoop. If a big man stands on it, so it's like sometimes I haven't painted black. It's just, like, you know, just one. Fuck it. <laughs> just commit, brother. Yeah. Get some green apple. <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah. Nah, nah, nah. We ain't going that far. Uh, but anyways, yeah. So Esther put me on, Phil hollers at me when I'm in Miami, we have a good conversation. He basically says, like, we need to, you know, do some initiation, like, just pop up, come mm-hmm. around, make yeah. sure everybody likes you. I was like, mm, cool. I like that, I um, like that. So I, 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 did, I did too. That's how you do business. Yeah. You know, you do soft entries. Yeah. You know? Uh, come back, and I was worried about what I was going to do for the show, mm-hmm. like, outfit-wise. Mm. I was like, man, I don't want to wear, be caught on stage with anything anybody else can have. You know, I'm always like that. Yeah. got to have something different. Um, scouring the internet, looking at all this different stuff, and I'm just like, ah, oh, I don't know, is it gonna get here in time? And I was like, bro, what are you doing? I'm um, like, you just talked to Phil, who runs Soul, who's a dope ass clothing line, yeah, you know, black owned business, yep. you know what I mean? It's local, and you're doing a local show. And I was like, hit him up. So I went through the website, found some shit that I liked, and was like, yo, you got this? And what you call it? He was like, yeah, yeah. And I was like, cool, you know, what's it gonna run me? You know, hooked it up, you know, we made it happen. Um, and then, you know, I rocked in on stage. He was like, yo, we gonna come support. You know, and I was like, damn, like, out the gate, it was just love. That's you know dope. what I mean? Like, I was like, I want to wear your clothes. He was like, I want to come watch you perform. I want to bring people with me. Um, really just pushing the, the message of support. Like I said, a yeah. creative family, yep. Yep. literally, and the family shows up for each other. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's why, you know, his name is kind of everywhere right now. That's why Soul is everywhere right now. Um, Lovers and Friends collection uh, drops saturday mm-hmm. right um they're collabing with lovers of slc mm-hmm. for that really dope um concept they have for message that, like a dope message outfits, yeah yeah you know what i mean and and it's just high quality materials at an affordable price and he's really just out here trying to you know change the culture that's dope he's about that so so that's how that all came together and last night we just did um the photo shoot for the cover they're doing a mixtape releasing physical cds with that Got a song on there. You're going to check that. It's called Head Up. Mm, have I heard that one yet? Nah, nah. Ooh, okay, nah, okay, this, okay. This okay. is the last minute, man. So okay. He was, he was cool about it. He was like, yo, I know we just kind of started linking. If you want to be on the project, he's like, if you got a record that would fit the bill, send it on. That's dope. I, I sent him over like a rough version, man. He had his engineer hop on it. He just kind of put a little mix on it to try to make it something. He's like, if you like the mix and you, you rocking with it, we'll put it on there. That's like, dope. Cool. So, man, he's real dope, man. He's really about it. Um... Every time me and them have conversations, you know, it's very quality. Uh, it's like some big bro, little bro um, kind of, you know, relationship. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, yeah, uh, everyone in it. I, I mean, I don't even want to go down the list. There's like 20 of us. There's just mm. way too many. But um, Esther really kind of put me in that position to do that. And then, you know, Phil, being an amazing businessman, you know, we talked it out. And 
you know so i'm rocking with them right now and you know whatever we got to do and so if y'all are like, listening saturday you can catch me you know good grammar mm. kind of got a um tiny desk. little tiny desk yeah a little tiny desk uh performance like i said collabs with lovers or soc shout out to them they got some big things coming too i think um may 22nd yeah oh is that the the r&b joint is that the first event yeah oh dope they're dope dope a, dope doing like an r&b night man they're bringing it back that's to dope nothing but r&b old hell yeah school, kickback grown up grown yeah. sexy vibes which is what we need we need a lot of love yeah. in this world right now mm-hmm. so, so that's why i'm happy to be rocking with this and, yeah you know, we'll hey hey up. shout out to lovers slc i grew up with y'all um Most i don't definitely. i don't talk to y'all like we like we used to but uh Loving y'all from a distance, definitely, for sure. Uh, nothing but blessings and success for that event. Absolutely. So that's kind of how that came together, and we'll see what, what comes from it. But I'm excited uh, to continue working with all of them. And, uh, yeah, you're going to see us all around, for mm-hmm. sure. Oh, yeah, you're definitely. you see us all around. A lot of yeah. talented artists. Yeah. A lot of talented artists. Yeah. That group, bro. Yeah. Some, Utah got some heat, heat out here. Bro, bro. heat. Somebody's going to blow. Somebody's going to blow. It has to blow. Yeah. Uh, make, sure, make sure it's Utah artists y'all collaborating, too. I can't tell you um, how important. That Have is. you got hit up since the verse about features or anything like that? No, not yet. Okay, but, um, I see you chopping it up with Bobby. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll be honest. Yeah, me and Bobby need a because I need a rap. You yeah. Know what I mean, I need a rap. Record. Rap, rap. Yeah. Yeah. It's been, it's been a minute. Lyrical album, miracle. Like I was, you know, I was making song, but like I want to just rap. Mm-hmm. You know, me and my boy Romeo could be rapping, and I feel like Bobby yeah. brings that same thing. Oh man, yeah. And then me and Venom, you know, I DM a little bit. Mm-hmm. Try to figure out what we got to do there. Get a little R&B record, something together on that side. Uh, I just feel like me and those guys mesh. Yeah. Like, they got star power. Um, and we all have the ability to cross over, which means most people used to take that as a negative thing. Yeah. But, like, we have radio sounds. And that's not, like I said, once again, this is not to take away from any of the artists. I hope no one's taking anything negative from this. Um, but, you know, just speaking on those artists in general, um, yeah, me and Purr. Excuse me, me and Per got a record in the stash. Wait, from here? Yeah, Per two times. Shout out two times. For real? Yeah. We got one what? in the stash. Because he was hard too. Yeah, I got sent in the stems. Oh, shit. Him and uh, 95 Dan got a project. What? Uh, coming out. That, that, I think in two days. Man. It might be oh, coming out this Friday. Man, because yeah, cause he really impressed me too up there. Per? Yeah. Dan? Yeah. Yeah, this is the homies. Um, I, I love Per, man. Per showed me mad love since I moved here. One of the first guys to rock with me. That's dope. Um. <clears throat> I got to send you those stems, bro. I'm playing. Like, I'm really playing. Um, but, yeah, we got a record. We got a nice little. Man, see, I was going to I was gonna put this episode in a tug, but this shit got to come out Saturday, bro. Put it out. This shit got to come out. Yeah, yeah. yeah this shit got to come we out. We just talking shit. Yeah. We ain't even in see. I mean, you know, because, you know, season five is coming when the merch comes and the photo shoot that we're doing. I, I reached out to Esther. I'm like, yo, did Mike tell you? She's like, no, he didn't tell me, but I'm good. <laughs> so she said she's good to go for the ultimate light skin capsule. Yeah. Miguel got the paint. Oh, I see you got the paint on on your pants from the Ultimate Light Skin Capsule. I see that blue. I see that blue. <laughs> it's going to be special, man. It's going to be good. Dude, I'm excited for that. Yeah. Um, Nothing but heat, man, for real. Dope. Pressure. I was thinking about that today, man. Like, I just got a lot of pressure for people. You know, and then this year I'm back on my, like, bottle shit. You know, I'm, I'm serving fits. Mm-hmm. That's what I like to do. I like to get dressed. Yeah. You know, COVID's almost over. Like, you don't have a reason to get dressed the last fucking year. What true. Do you do? Yeah, true, yeah. I figured out my freshest sweatpants and leisure comfy outfits of all time, though, during COVID. But now it's like I'm back. Like, the sweatpants, <laughs> it's hot outside. I'm putting the sweatpants up. You know what I mean? You know, we got the gray gray Nike woven shorts. What's up, ladies? I know that's what y'all like. <laughs> we got the Nike wovens. Uh, you know, and we, we here. We get, yeah. We getting the Air Max 90s out all summer. Yeah. Get the white tees with the chains. Mm, okay, Actually, okay. That's not, that's not me. I don't do that. I wear black all year round because uh, my heart is gone. Um, <laughs> I got some. I got some. Michel- looks, dog. I got some Michelin Ness is ready. You do? Oh yeah. I need some jerseys. Yeah, I got. I got enough. I almost wear jerseys tonight. Yeah, I got the Michelin Ness is ready. What you got in the closet? You know what I'm saying? Well, what can you tell us about the jerseys? Oh man, I don't give a shit. I got the um shit. I got the Matt Barnes. Not it's not the Matt Barnes, not but, Matt Barnes. but no, no, it's the Steph Curry uh, Navy. The Warriors one, but okay. it's that that throwback one. 20, ah, got it, got it, got it, got, got it. navy. I got the oh the uh, navy with the orange. Yeah, with the, yeah. I call that the um when Baron Davis Jason du- Richardson. Yeah, when da- yeah, yes, yep. I got yeah. that one. Um, I got the Orlando Magic penny black. Okay. Um, I got the um uh, Toronto Raptors Vince Carter with the with the actual um, Raptor on okay, it. Okay, okay. Yeah, I buy a jersey every summer. There you go. Yeah, I've been wanting to do that for a while. Yeah. 
I mean, you get a discount on Mitchell and Ness, man. It's like hundred bucks. Like, I'll spend a hundred dollars on at the bar. You know what I mean? I so to, I was about to get the. Uh, I was gonna get a uh, what was it? A LeBron, mm -hmm. LeBron LA powder joint. Oh, okay. Be you know a little basic. Yeah. But um, I don't know. Now you got me really yeah. thinking. I try to I buy stuff. Jerseys. I want jerseys that like nobody has. I try to be nostalgic with mine. So like I had the the um the Chris or not the Chris uh who's the comedian that was Little Penny. Mm. What was the name? Oh he was God. on New Jack City. He was Pookie. Chris Rock. Like Chris Rock. Chris Rock. I had the those pennies. No. I remember I <laughs> saved my my all my allowance up, $130, bought those pennies. So I'm like, all right, now I got the jersey for that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um you and then magic. Yeah, then the rap the Raptors. Come on, man. I wanted McGrady because that was my guy, but I'm like, I'll go with the Carter. And then as far as step, that's my guy. That's that's like that's my guy. So the next one is the uh Mitchell and Ness just released the Georgetown Hoyas, but it keeps selling out, the Iverson one. Oh. Yeah. Man. And I had that jersey when I was in like eighth grade. So I gotta rebuy that. Yeah. yeah. So I just I just keep it nostalgic, man. So Steph Curry is my Iverson. Really? For me. For you? Because I was an Iverson fanatic. Oh, he's like your new. Yeah, I, yeah. Because I was, I mean, I was an Iverson. Fan. Yeah. I had braids because I was. Yeah, like, same. I had same. a headband. Yep. And um, I went to the links of we used to take baseball socks. You cut the foot off of them mm -hmm. and you wore it as the sleeve. Because you couldn't. Cause you look, can find those. You can you find those. Not, yeah. The sleeves were not yeah. swole back yeah. then. Yeah, now you like, go to Dick's was, and get. Uh, yeah. fucking there everywhere. Yeah. And Walgreens, <laughs> aisle three. Oh, but no, if you don't know the struggles of that, that's how you really know the struggles of like. Wanting to idolize like these hoopers, bro, and Allen Iverson, at least to me, kind of like Drake. He, when I say look like me, he was small in stature, and he was the closest thing to an NBA player. Like he was six foot. Yeah. So I was like, all right, he's the shortest guy in the league, and he hooped. He, he crossed niggas up. You know, so you I know what's like, crazy? The um, I was late to uh my senior graduation party in '01. Shout out to all the class of '01 because I was watching that first game and he, I remember I was watching it with my dad when he stepped over Tyron Lue. Oh, you was watching that? Yeah, I was late to the graduation party. They was like, "Zo, what are you doing?" I'm like, "I just had to watch the 76ers bust the Lakers' ass in Game One." Sorry, because everyone out here is a Laker fan. Yeah, of course. You know, so of course. Yeah, it was crazy. I mean, growing up for me, uh, um, my guys were Iverson was one. Um, I had a couple of his shoes. I remember mm -hmm. I saved up. And my pops hit me halfway to buy the the AI. I think it was the sixes, mm -hmm. the white and red All Star version. It was like the last good pair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before yeah. it got kind of weird. Mm -hmm. um, and then McGrady, mm -hmm. I had the T Mac twos. The McGrady's was was nice to hoop T in. Yeah, yeah, T Mac two lows, white with the red. Yep. Patent leather. You know what I'm saying? I had them. Um, I did have a pair of Nike shocks. Because VC made those. Yeah, yeah, the shocks. I didn't have the VCs, yeah. but I had, a, I I had, had the socks too, yeah, yeah. Pair of shocks. Yep. Um, I had a couple different pair of Iversons. And then, then we got like whack ass Adidas growing up. But my guys were Iverson, McGrady, Carmelo, obviously Jordan. Yeah. You know, that's, that's a no brainer. That's your GOAT? Jordan? Yeah. Um, Jordan's the greatest winner of all time in my eyes. Who's your GOAT? LeBron? Uh, nah, nah. I mean, there's GOATs of different areas, man. I'm one of the guys who, yeah. like, I don't like to do like the. If we want to play the like, who's the one guy? No, 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 no. You know, no, it's, you're, like, it's hard. You're one guy. Like for me, because I'm a little, you know what I mean? I'm I a little just, older, so just, Michael Jordan's my goat. Yeah, Michael Jordan. Dude, yeah. You walk in my house, it's Michael Jordan. Yeah. Everything. Mm -hmm. Like I'm wearing Jordans now. Yeah. Like, because of oh, I wore Jordans at bro, the Utah. Bro, we can't we can't forget about D Wade. Yeah, 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 but I was like, I'm talking like before. O3. Okay. Okay. Anything before a class? Because I, I would like, say I would say after Iverson, I was a D Wade fan, like for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So what happened, yeah, right after that, D-Wade, and this that's a whole nother segue. I gotta talk basketball forever. But it became D-Wade, and then Braun came in, mm -hmm. right? And Jordan was out the lead. So I was like, who's my favorite player? Yeah. You know, you had to like every now and then you gotta re-up, you gotta yeah. be like, who am I who am I rocking with? And then everybody was like, How the fuck are you a Heat fan? Right? Because mm -hmm. I wasn't fucking with the Pacers because the front office was whack. We were supposed to take a point guard. Right. Tyler Lawson was in the draft. And we skipped Ty Lawson, even though he wasn't like a franchise point guard. He gave nine good years to the yeah. league. Mm -hmm. was, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, yeah. He was, he was like killing that North Carolina. Yeah, time. yeah. From what they say. Yeah. Ty, don't hate me if you see this. Because you know him and Felton played together, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. But the point was, we need a point guard. And I was like, we can get Ty Lawson. Right. And we go with Tyler Hansborough. Come that's right. on, dog. That's like, right. Completely against, <laughs> completely against everything we stand for. And I was like, I'm done. Right. And then we had the, 
the battle at the palace. Yeah. You know, niggas, Jermaine on it was peace of niggas. Right. <laughs> and then we got ready the whole team. Yep. And I was like, I'm done. I, I get but why yeah, we got on the cam. The team. You got on the cam. You ain't watching the camera. Oh, per- oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. So, yeah, that happens. So I'm like, dude, I'm done with the Pacers. Yeah. I'm done, done. I was like, I can't, I can't deal with it. I'm, I'm hurt. I'm broken. So deep down inside, there's a little bitty space in my heart for the Pacers. Right. In Indiana. And then it was like D-Wade came in the league. Love D-Wade. And then it was like Bron started taking over naturally. I was like, yo, this nigga crazy. Mm-hmm. And we've been watching Bron since high school. Yeah. And then when they linked up, dog. I was like a kid on Christmas. Yeah. I was like two of my favorite players in the league yeah. on the same team. And, you know, they went and did what they did. But, yeah, man, I love the NBA. Yeah. Melo. Melo, though. That guy's crazy. I can yeah. cry. I'm going to Melo. Got to see him play. Jazz game. That was cool. Yeah, then when, shit, when Steph Curry came in, I was like, I watched him in Davis, and I'm like, this is my guy. Because I, I go with players. Yeah. Like, I haven't watched the NFL. My last player that I loved in the NFL was Donovan McNabb. Yeah, <laughs> cold, uh, Soup, man. yeah, man. Come on, fourth and twenty. Come on, you better put some respect on the uh, with the broken with, leg. Yeah, man. Come on, you better put some respect on the receding hairline. He still got the tape and the afro. Honestly, honestly, man, he really it went it went Steve Mc. We have Vic. Yes, we have Vic. Yeah. It went like Steve McNair and then Donovan McNabb. When you talk mm-hmm. about who put on black quarterbacks. And, and, you know, there's a whole lot sprinkled in between yeah. Dante Culpepper and those guys. Yeah. When we talk about who put on for, like, black quarterbacks in the league at that time coming through, it went Steve McNair, and then Don McNair went brazy for us. Yeah. He went brazy. Like, yeah. He, every single year, you play with him on Madden, bro? Yeah. You ever play with the Eagles on Madden? Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Dude, you literally could just. And then, and, and then he went, <laughs> he went receded. What? Well, who? Well, who? Man, people off camera. Brady? Shit. I don't know who they are. <laughs> are you are you a Patriots fan? Oh, okay. <laughs> Sticks is a fool, man. Uh and then he went receded we he, he went receded hairline with the dread with the braids too. Oh, he did? Yeah, man. So you know his hairline kept getting yeah. pulled back twice as fast. Yeah. Yeah, man. Nah, yeah, NBA, man. I love, I love basketball. Um, hey, before we get out of here, you you already gave your top two. Who's your Who's in your top five? Hoopers, rappers, rappers. Oh, damn. I don't know. What's the criteria? It don't matter, man. You I have to ask the criteria because everyone, like, when we're talking about, like, just with goats, bro. And you can put Lauren Hill in there for all I care. All right, so I'm just gonna take my. I always tell people it ain't about my size, my yeah, favorites. Yeah. Who are my top? Who's your favorite? favorite yeah. Rappers, and it can never go five because then I go ten. Yeah. And then I get honorable mention. So to make this as quick as possible, no particular order, I have to do it. Mm-hmm. It's way too yeah. Cool. So we got Drake. Mm-hmm. We got Wayne, Kanye, Jay Z, and four of them. I gotta go with. Cole. Mm, okay. I'm trying to be diverse because there's so many. Um, you can put Ross in there, dog. Like, this is where it just gets crazy. Like, I'll just, just name Ross, Jeezy. I mean, Tip. To me, to me, um, Ross got the best like body. Like, he puts out a body of work. That's what I appreciate about Ross. Um, God forgives I've don't. Yeah, it got so many. Shit, fucking outcast. Like, those are just some of my favorites. I mean, I'm probably skipping some. I'm probably really missing some. You can never, and you can never have a right or wrong list. Right. There's so many. Yeah. And my rotation changes. Um, but yeah, that's that's roughly like about ten. You know, okay. Tops: Drake, Jay, Kanye. Shit, Eminem, like I'm tripping. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, there's a whole. Yeah. There's a whole. It just depends on what part of your life. If you yeah. had to ask me, like, when I was 15, who's your top five? Yeah. And when I'm 20, who's your top five? Yeah. I just had to, because it always changes. Yeah. It always changes. What about you? Who you got? I mean, obviously, uh, Jay Z. That's my number one. You know what I mean? Yeah, Nas. Like, <laughs> Nas. Um, Drake, Kanye. Uh, shoot. Pac. Pac. Sure. 
Pac. I was a huge Pac fan. I would actually put Pac right under Jay. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was a huge Pac fan. Just for just for the fact, man, like Pac's dope. Psh, he wrote that beat, bro. He wrote that. Like in his songs, like his he, he made he made his music turned in like he made a song. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, so Snoop's up there. I was gonna say Dre. Um Cube. Cube, for sure. Um, who else did I listen? Who who else was I heavily, heavily? Nipsey. Gotta put Nipsey in there. Yeah. Um try and then and then from the south, definitely outcast for sure from the south. Um shit, Nick, I will put Mace in there for me too. Nigga, Mace was <laughs> Mace, honestly, bro, Mace <laughs> had one fire motherfucking album yeah. Harlem World. Yeah. And if you listen to that thing front yeah. to back, it was untouchable. Yeah. And I'll throw in, um, I'll throw in Biggie. Like we can't sleep on. Biggie, we'll we'll like. throw in Biggie. I'll throw in Ja Rule's first two albums. Yep. Um, Dmx for sure. Shout DMX, rest in peace, yeah. Dmx. Um, you can put Busta Rhymes in there. Busta. On you know what you listen to. Yeah, Busta. I'll throw Busta in there. Shit, man. I even throw um. Who else? I, who else would get honorable mention for me, man? For me, Cameron. Cameron. Cam. Yeah. Cameron nice. Yeah. Cameron nice. I'm trying to think. Cause I used to have a CD collection. Okay, real quick before we get out, we'll do one more top five. R and B. When we start first? Yeah, because nobody talks about R and B. Everybody's gonna talk Whew, about rap. First of all, R and B. Man. It could be groups. Drew Hill. Solo acts. <laughs> we were okay. five steps from eternity. Four steps. <laughs> <laughs> Four steps, man. No. And three wishes. Sticks, get on the drums. No? And three wishes. <laughs> Ooh. Touching the heavens above. Ooh. Drew Hill, Joe to see. Donnell Jones. Donnell Jones. Joe. Wow. Joe. Case. Case. Oh my God. I'll be sure. <laughs> Gotta throw in I'll be sure. Uh, Joe is different, though. Yeah, oh yeah. Joe is. I would like to take a journey yeah. through. <laughs> Bruh, all right. I, I love all of those. I would say for me, man, where do we start? Ursher. Mm. You know Ursher. Yo, shout out to me. Shout out to Melissa. Me and uh, Melissa, we do, um, we, we, we get to drinking, we do verses, and we'll be up till three in the morning. Um, what do you guys do? Like karaoke in the kitchen? No, we just we just pass the phone back and forth in the kitchen. Oh, you ox, ox words? <laughs> yeah, ah. and we did a versus. Uh, she, I chose Usher. She chose Chris Brown. I got her the fuck out of here. Oh, now, oh so y'all just do a home yeah, versus? And and and, oh, I like and, that and, idea. I, and I was matching her B. I'm like I'm gonna match her BPM. I was matching her BPMs, and Usher got Chris Brown out of here. Beats per minute. Yeah. For those of you don't know. Yeah. Wow, Usher ran Chris out. Oh yeah. Damn. Cause you got to think about when when Chris started doing the techno stuff, like yeah yeah, Usher Usher got stuff with Pitbull, Usher got stuff with Will I Am, like you know what I mean? Yeah, like so come on. I'm thinking about going to his residency. In yeah, Vegas. that'd be dope. It's, gonna, it's a bag though. That'd be dope. It's a little bag. For like thirty bucks. Is it Dre's? It's like, like five hundred, six hundred ticket. To get into the after hours. To the Usher concert, like for real? At, uh, I don't remember. Anyways, so we got Usher mm -hmm. number one. Um, early John Legend. Early John Legend, we like that. Uh, I'm gonna have to go with EB Eric Bellingham. Oh, super sleeper. Yeah, yeah. Fellas, just press play on the album. Fuck dog. you, niggas. I know. Press I'm play, dope. put it on repeat. Yeah, make your girl happy. Yeah. Um, be crazy. <laughs> um, <laughs> new school Bryson Tiller. Mm. I don't even know that's considered R and B. Whatever y'all want. That's R and B. I think that's R and B. Um, and then we run it back. We want to jump back to. S I mean, you already said Jodeci. We know that. One twelve was fire. One twelve was super fire. One twelve was fire. Hey, who's your top five for um, White Soul? What is this? Numbers in your pocket. Yeah, 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 of uh -huh. White Soul. Robin Thicke. <laughs> oh, White Soul, <laughs> Robin Thicke. Um, yeah, we go. We just want to do the battle. JT. Battle of the white guys. Yeah. You got Justin Timberlake. Yep. You got Justin Bieber. Mhm. Mm you got Robin Thicke. Robin Thicke. Who else we got? Hmm. Who? 
Charlie Puth. Puth. Okay, okay. Sam um, Smith. Sam. Oh yeah, Sam. Sam. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, who? Who? I just had it in my head. His account. Um. I can't remember his name. But anyways, of those, I mean, to me, I've always said I think Bieber has the most pure, one of the most pure singing voices I've ever heard in my entire life. Mm -hmm. Like Michael Jackson pure. More more than uh, Justin Timberlake. It's right up there. Mm, okay. I'm a huge JT fan. Okay. I'm okay. blowing a bag next time he goes on tour. Because it might be. Hey. Think about it. These guys are getting to the point to where they're not going to tour anymore. Yeah. Okay. So what about new school? I'll go. Because you said Bryson Tiller, I go uh, Giveon. Give me on. Yeah, That's what give me on. Um, yeah. I fuck with Blast. I don't know if he's considered R and B. Like I think he mm -hmm. is Blast. Um, Fire. you mess with uh Masego. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Have you messed? Do you know? Do you know L A? Let's get the females in here because I'm tripping. Do you mess with L A? You need to get on to L A. I'm gonna fuck with that. Yeah. I ain't say no females. I apologize. Her. Frax. S W V. Um. SZA. Aaliyah. Aaliyah. Oh yeah, Aaliyah. Tripping, Lauren Hill. Yeah, super tripping. Uh, shit. shit, Missy Elliott. Dude. Man, are you? Um, who's Superwoman? Who is that? Who is that? Baby, you're my. Well, you used to rap with Fabulous all. Yeah, Rada. who is that? Who is that? Uh, man, who? Man, it's on my tip of my tongue too. I can't remember. But I will say my favorite, probably R&B singer, female of all time, that makes me super happy when I'm down mm -hmm. and we can get out of here with this is literally Monica. Mm -hmm. Just one of those days. Mm, Literally, okay. if I'm feeling sad, I play that song. Okay. So Monica has a special place. For my, my mine will be Kelly Price. Kelly Price. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Migos did a song called Kelly Price. <laughs> What's the prize? <laughs> Look at Miguel, man. All He's right, like, man. What the let's fuck wrap are y'all talking let's about? Let's wrap this shit up, man. Oh, oh, Hispanic. Selena. Selena. Who else? J Lo. J Lo. <laughs> for a. Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> Selena. <laughs> Selena Gomez. <laughs> stupid. <laughs> what do we got? What, is, what ethnicity is Ariana Grande? Dre Rocca. <laughs> she look like a few different. Who, Ariana Grande? Yeah, she look like a few different ethnicities. I'm not trying to be funny. Now. Who? She is? Okay. I mean, I know you know. Okay. She's done. <laughs> did, we miss, did we miss any genre? No, we're good. We're good, man. man. What's she? Hey, hey. Uh, Marvin Gaye. Hey. Come on, man. Come on, man! Did you see when Dre redid the uh, was trying to redo the beat on uh, um, what was that one thing he him and uh, Jimmy Iovine did on uh, HBO? That shit was fire. I didn't see he that. redid one of Marvin Gaye's. He's like, I can't get the drums right because nothing sounds like that back in the. It, it, it yeah, it was some heat. They were different. But yeah, man. But uh, hey, man, thanks, thanks for uh, co-hosting with me, man. I really appreciate yeah. it. Um, I would say I, I will, I'm watching you from a distance, but um, I'm, I'm watching you up close. My shadow. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, um, a lot of big things in the works for this summer. We outside. We outside. We outside. We outside. You know what I mean? Vaccinated, big, big vaccinations. Shut vitamin off. C. You know what I mean? I just started taking these apple cider vinegar gummies. You know, apple yeah. cider vinegar gummies from Instagram. You know. I take three <laughs> vitamin C gummies every morning. Me too, man. Me too. And them just be bomb too. Take care of yourself. Yeah. People. Health is wealth, man. I just started drinking the greens, you know, from Ghost. Shout out to Ghost. We're on sponsor us. Um, but yeah, man. Uh, well, shit. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Young OG Perspective, where we give you a new perspective. A fresh perspective. A Young OG Perspective, baby. Yeah.